Hi, I'm Scott Kane. I'm the Generic Model Organism Database Project Coordinator, and I'm also a developer at Wormbase, and I do outreach for JBrowse too. So this talk that I'm giving is like all of the things that I really like to do. Um, so we'll be talking about what we did to get JBrowse 2 integrated into Wormbase. Um, first, I'll start with uh, uh, JBrowse 2. It's a fully featured genome browser. It has uh, support for many common track types and kind of file types. And uh, it has uh, special features for doing structural variant analysis as well as comparative genomics. It is a web-based uh, application or a Windows, Mac, and Linux desktop application, and they share the same feature set across them. Uh, and yeah, and support for many common data types is very important to us. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the tabular, uh, circular, and breakpoint views. They're all, they are pretty neat, um, but they're not the sort of thing we really need at Wormbase, but they're there in case you want to use them. Um, but I will be talking about the Synteny and dot plot views that we do for comparative genomics. Uh, I think we've gotten some good results with that so far. Wormbase is a model organism database, if you haven't heard of it before. It's been around since 2002, and I think that there was kind of precursors long before that in ACDB for, you know, for the oldsters in the, in the, in the room, you might remember that. Um, but yeah, so I've been, I've been working uh, directly from Wormbase for, I don't know, I feel like in the ballpark of five or six years now. Um, Wormbase's tech, technology stack is interesting. Um, it has uh, kind of on the bottom a, uh, a datomic database that is uh, a commercial database provider that we use. Um, it, actually, the, the website used to run until not too long ago, probably, again, four or five, maybe six years ago, about the same time I started working for Wormbase. It used to run entirely off of ACDB directly, uh, but then we ported to use Datomic. It's much better. And there are still parts of the website that run off of MySQL as well. Then um, and the server uh, is uh, Perl with template toolkit, you know, using Mod Perl and Apache. Um, so again, making the old people feel comfortable and at home. <laughs> this, is, this is stuff we still use a lot of. Um, and then on the front end, we use jQuery and React.js. Um, we use Webpack to package those things all up, nice and neat. Um, and we use JBrowse 1 and GBrowse as well um, because uh, people don't like change. So we've been supporting GBrowse for a very long time now and are getting ready to just pitch it forever. Um, why move to JBrowse 2? Well, one of those things is because I would like to stop supporting GBrowse. Um, and I'll talk about why this is gonna let us do that here. Um, Basically, JBrowse 2 uses more modern, modern technology. It uses React JS as well, uh, whereas JBrowse 1 was written in Dojo, uh, which is a JavaScript library that I don't think it's used much anymore. Um, there are support for more data types and more view types in JBrowse 2 compared to JBrowse 1. Like I said, particularly the dot plot and Symphony we're very interested in. There's also a, uh, a package created as part of JBrowse 2 called the, um, the Embedded Linear Genome View, which we abbreviate LGV. Um, and that gives really a fully functional browser embedded inside of a web page, which is very convenient because that's the sort of thing we want in our, you know, gene pages and, and you know, other feature pages, you know, much like this picture. And then finally, the thing that is going to help us jettison GBrowse is that JBrowse 2 will let us create SVGs, um, which is a request that has come from users a lot ever since we implemented JBrowse 1. Basically, users really like JBrowse 1 but it doesn't create SVGs. And so they want, they want things that they can put on their posters and in their papers. And so we'll be able to get, we'll be able to get back to that now with GBrowse 2. Um, there, um, so for getting the dot plot and synteny views working at JBrowse, um, there are a few things. Basically when it comes to doing comparative genomics data, usually the trick, well, when it comes to creating good comparative genomics views, usually the trick is getting good data. Um, and I'm not going to say that I necessarily am using good data in this instance, um, but uh, what I did do was use uh, Minimap2 to, to compare uh, two not too distant genomes. Um, I'll tell you what I think not too distant means here in a second. Um, and then I added specific links. This is a, a drop down in our tools menu right here. And I'll just point out that the part that I've obscured with this red circle is the Synteny viewer, which is GBrowse Synth. So I'll be glad to get rid of that as well too, because it is definitely starting to show its age. Um, this is what you get with uh, the dot plot and synteny views. So anyway, this is a comparison of C. elegans, which is kind of the main species at Wormbase and C. briggsae, which is either 100 million years or 20 million years distant in evolutionary terms. Uh, apparently it's hard to tell because, you know, there aren't many worm fossils around. Uh, but we can see that there's still, there's still definitely sections of, uh, of the comparative chromosomes that, that definitely have, um, you know, collinear regions still, even on the nucleotide level. So this is a, a reasonable use case. Uh, 
so the thing that is nice about this dot plot though is that it is interactive. It's not just a plot. I can grab something and highlight it. And then I get a pop-up menu that says, oh, would you like to zoom in on this region? Or would you like to open it in a Symphony view? And this is what I get when I open it. And Symphony view is basically this sort of thing. Basically there's an inversion here. You can see that's why the, the lines are all crossing. Um, one of the things that JBrowse 2 can also do that JBrowse 1 can't is I could decide to flip one of these. Uh, so that then instead of getting these kind of crossing uh, symphony lines, I would get like, you know, nice trapezoids that'd be maybe a little easier to interpret. But, uh, but I thought this made for a more interesting picture and gave me a chance to talk about the, the ability to flip side to side. But anyway, so that's, uh, that's what we have for uh, comparative genomics. And then for uh, embedding the linear genome view in our feature pages, initially what I wanted to do when implementing this was just throw everything into our web pack and everything would be great because all of the JBrowse 2 code is available at NPM, so it's easy to get. Um, that didn't work at WormBase because we use React.js as well. The problem is it's a very old version of React.js, so there were conflicts. Uh, so I'm hoping to maybe find a student who would be interested in updating it, you know, so that then I could make this uh, React stuff work a lot better. Uh, but it doesn't matter because I can still solve it by just letting the linear genome view import its own version of React.js to use, and that works just fine on the website. Um, porting over the tracks from JBrowse 1 is, I would say, not too hard. There's a graphical editor that looks kind of like this that lets you just, you know, enter stuff in, and it's dynamic so that when you enter things in, it happens automatically. Uh, there was a little bit of activation energy I had to get over to get started kind of doing this, but once, you get, once I got rolling, it was very easy. Um, and while I didn't use it for this project, there is also a tool uh, in the JBrowse command line interface to help with porting. Basically, you can feed it in a config and it'll spit out something. I will probably use that. We've got lots and lots of big wig and big bed tracks that I will probably use that tool for so that I don't have to really touch them. Okay, lots of things I'm going to do. Expand the linear genome view for all assemblies. Right now, it's just covering C elegans. I've got, we've got 31 uh, assemblies. I need to expand all those. Um, I don't have the same number of tracks as our JBrowse 1 instance. There are literally hundreds of those, but a lot of those will be done with scripting, like I said. Um, I want to add pairwise Synteny uh, for more assemblies. I should point out that the Synteny viewer that, that I showed you, it only does pairwise at the moment. Um, and I'm not going to do all versus all because that would be like 900 comparisons, but I'll do many versus most, probably around 100. Uh, I'll script that as two, script that too. Um, uh, also add the linear genome view to replace our current JBrowse one powered uh, protein viewer, it works in protein space. Um, and then uh, after our release that comes out probably in about a week, I'm going to move all of this work into our uh, staging server, and then that will go out in our next release, which will be sometime in the fall. Okay, anyway, JBrowse 2, easy to install, even in a complex environment, has many different visualization types, and porting JBrowse 1, while not trivial, is, uh, is still pretty straightforward. Thanks to all my friends at UC Berkeley and Ontario Institute for Cancer Research, whose institutes helped support the development of this work, and also uh, the National Institutes of Health and the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. Thanks.